is it possible to lose fat and gain muscle at the same time? I mean, this is really the holy grail of weight loss. If we could do both, that would be pretty freaking spectacular. But most people say it's impossible. And I would tend to agree, except for maybe under specific circumstances, but there may be a new medication coming to the market in the next few years that changes that entire story. Bimagrumab is a new medication that is currently in the pipeline showing some, well, almost unbelievable results. Bimagrumab belongs to a class of medications called monoclonal antibody drugs. To give you the breakdown of what that is, an antibody is a specific protein that is produced by our immune system. And antibodies are designed to remove what are called antigens. Antigens are things like bacteria, viruses, toxins, basically anything that is bad news bears to the human body and our health. These antibodies are going to bind to these targets and get rid of them. Now, each antibody that is produced is highly specific. They're like a heat-seeking missile that only goes and attaches to their specific antigen that they're designed for. And the reason for this specificity is to prevent damage to you know, healthy cells or removing molecules and things from our body that are beneficial to us. So it only goes to its one specific target, takes it out, and doesn't harm anything else. So, bimagrumab is an engineered antibody based on human monoclonal antibodies. So it's engineered to go after a specific target called the activin type 2 receptors. Now, the activin type 2 receptors have multiple functions throughout our body. However, one of the primary functions is being on the surface of our muscle cells and getting bound by a protein called myostatin. The purpose of myostatin is to bind to these receptors and to inhibit muscle growth or to prevent our muscles from getting too large which biologically makes sense, especially 30,000 years ago. And that's because muscle requires a lot of calories and energy, which may not have been readily available, so it would have taken a lot of time, energy, and such like that to keep them up. As well, having muscles that are too large can affect your ability to be mobile and do the things that you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Therefore, when bimagrumab binds to the activin receptors, what it essentially does is prevents myostatin from binding. And therefore, if myostatin can't bind, muscle cell growth is no longer inhibited and muscle mass can increase. So, so far, so good. Now, bimagrumab was originally developed for muscle wasting conditions like age-related sarcopenia, as well as other illnesses that led to muscle loss. Unfortunately, it didn't seem to be all that effective for those conditions specifically. But while it did increase muscle mass to a degree, it was also found to significantly reduce fat mass and also to decrease insulin resistance. And thus, it started to be studied for the treatment of type 2 diabetes, obesity, and overall metabolic syndrome. And hey, if you're enjoying my content and you want to learn more about how to manage your weight with and without medication, then you should definitely hit the subscribe button down below. As well, check out the OG members membership side of my YouTube channel where you can tune in to a monthly live with myself where we cover a variety of topics that aren't covered on my regular YouTube stream and you can bring all of your questions because we do a live Q&A at the end of every single live session. So to subscribe and everything that you need are all down below and thank you for the ongoing support. So is this a drug that is too good to be true? Like can it really increase muscle mass and decrease fat? mass at the same time? Well, let's take a little look at the data, shall we? What we have here is a phase two trial that looked at individuals that have diabetes and obesity. Now, as a bit of an aside, a phase two trial is a very preliminary kind of study. Basically, we're checking, does the drug actually work? What's the right dosage? What are the side effects? What are some of the other ins and outs that we need to be aware of before we do a large scale much bigger and much more intensive phase three controlled trial. So with the publication of this data, we still got a ways before this medication makes it to the actual market. And what they did in this study is they took 75 individuals and split them into one of two groups. One group got an IV infusion every four weeks of bimagrumab, and the other group got a IV infusion of a placebo every four weeks. The participants all met with a dietitian on at least a monthly basis. There was also some inter-monthly follow-ups and that sort of thing. They were told to follow a calorie-restricted diet and advised to get at least 150 minutes of activity in each and every single week. 
all the participants were then followed for a period of 48 weeks. So, what exactly did they find? Well, bimagrumab led to a weight loss from baseline of approximately 6.5% or about 5.9 kilos over that 48 week period which might not seem like much considering Zepbound led to approximately 21% and Wagovi led to approximately 15% weight loss from baseline. But a couple things you need to keep in mind is that the studies with Zepbound and Wagovi were longer in one sense, and this study in particular was looking more at body composition changes. And as you can see in this graph right here, the authors looked at body fat mass decrease in particular. And what they found is that the participants that were on bimagrumab lost 20.5% of their baseline fat mass. Whereas the individuals in the placebo group only lost 0.5% of their baseline fat mass. Now to determine body composition changes, the authors of this study used what's called a DEXA scan, which is currently the gold standard of determining the composition of an individual's body between lean mass and fat mass tissue. Now what they also also found is that the individuals that were in the bimagrumab group gained 3.6% in lean mass above their baseline lean mass. And this was compared to the placebo group that lost 0.8% of their lean mass over the course of the trial. Yes, you heard that right. There was an increase in lean mass with the bimagrumab group. Now, this increase in lean mass wasn't just pure muscle. The increase is often multiple different things, but muscle increase was likely a part of it. Nonetheless, this is a result that we have yet to see with any of the other anti-obesity medications on the market, such as Zepbound and Wagovi. In fact, with those guys, we see a concurrent loss of lean mass. It's less so than the amount of fat mass that's lost, but nonetheless, there is a loss of lean mass with those other agents that are on the market. So this is an agent that is its first of its kind that is showing a, well, almost unbelievable result with the decrease in fat mass and the increase in lean mass. The other interesting findings of this study was that there was substantial reductions in A1C, about 0.75% in the bimagrumab group, and there was significant reductions in liver and visceral fat. Now, if you haven't already caught on, liver and visceral fat are really the fat that we are concerned about. This is the fat that's in and around your organs, it's found within the liver, it is the problematic fat that causes many of the health issues that come with obesity. So seeing substantial reduction in the fat mass in that regard is hugely beneficial. And hey, if you are seeking some additional support in managing your weight, maybe you don't know where to start, maybe you're already well along your way and you have some questions, whatever the case may be, check out the links down below. You can book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with myself and ask all of your questions and such like that. Or you can shoot me an email down below and we can talk about more intensive coaching options to give you the ongoing support that you need so that you can be as successful as possible with or without a medication along your weight loss journey. So check it out. Everything you need is all down below. Now, what about safety? What were the side effects that came with this medication? Because yes, it cannot be too good to be true. Overall, there was two main side effects that were quite prominent in the bimagrumab group. As you can see here, diarrhea and muscle spasms were those two side effects with about 41% of individuals experiencing each. There was also more nausea and hypertension in the bimagrumab group. And when we look at the number of participants that dropped out in each group, what we had in the bimagrumab group was about five individuals that dropped out and stopped taking the medication because of side effects, whereas there was only one person in the placebo group that did so. Now, as to why these side effects occurred, I mean, there could be kind of an inflammatory piece. It is a larger protein that we are infusing into the body, but overall, there's a lot of unanswered questions and things that, again, need to be teased out in the phase three trials to really determine why did these side effects occur? What do they actually mean? Is there longer term complications that could come with them? Lots of big question marks that still need to be answered. So overall, definitely a bit of a yellow cautionary flag, if you will. 
Now, one thing I do want to point out here is that, yes, there was an increase in muscle mass, but the authors also looked at, does that increase in muscle mass also lead to a increase in strength? And so what they looked at was the change in grip strength before and after the bimagrumab. And grip strength is overall a pretty reliable marker for telling us about total body strength. And what they found was that there was no change in grip strength with the increase in muscle mass. And unfortunately, this has been something that we have seen in previous studies with similar drugs that increase muscle mass. And that is the muscle mass increase doesn't lead to an increase in strength or function of that muscle. So if you were thinking that this drug might negate your need to hit the gym and be exercising, you would probably be wrong. To build functional and stronger muscles, you still gotta work out. Overall though, in terms of my thoughts, this is definitely an interesting and novel medication. The fact that participants were able to gain lean mass while being in a calorie deficit is, is pretty darn cool, if, if not the ideal of what we would want to achieve on a weight loss journey. However, there is still a lot of unanswered questions. I am concerned about the safety of the medication. What is that gonna look like? And when we're looking at kind of growing cells and that sort of thing in the human body, I'm always a little bit nervous. So definitely cautiously optimistic, if you will. The other big thing is that this drug being a monoclonal antibody, it is gonna be hella expensive. So I am looking forward to the phase three trials that are going to give us a lot more information about the effectiveness, the safety of this drug, and whether this drug is going to make it to market or not, and what that is going to mean for the future of obesity medicine. So that is it, and that is all you beautiful people. A new medication that is currently in the pipeline. It does look good, it does look promising, but we need a lot more data. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And of course, if you did, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below as well. Share it with anybody that you think might get some benefit from it. And don't forget to sign up for the OG members membership side of my YouTube channel where I provide content that doesn't show up in my regular YouTube feed. As well, every month I do a monthly live Q&A so you can bring all of your questions, concerns, and what have you, and I will answer them in real time. Plus, you get to support one of your favorite creators. And check me out on my other channels. We're on the Tick, the Talk, the Gram. You name it, we are out there. And as I always sign off, please remember that it's going to be those small tweaks that lead to the massive peaks.